Hey guys, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria and in this video I'm going to discuss how many calories you need to eat in a day in order to achieve optimal health. So uh, basically you have to eat enough <laughs> and what does that look like because it's a pretty subjective way of uh, saying how many calories you need to eat. In general, sedentary women will require a minimum of 2,000 calories a day and a sedentary man will require a minimum of 2,500 calories a day and that is the minimum requirements for fulfilling energy needs as well as nutrient requirements. But most people are going to require more than that. If you're doing any form of mental or physical activity, you will require more. And you can base that um, also according to your appetite. So now that you know minimums, um, you can go up from there. So you're saying, okay, now I'm doing, I am a little bit active. So for anybody who is the slightest bit active, you'll want to bump that up uh, another 500 calories. So an active adult woman, a minimum of 2,500 calories a day. Active adult man, a minimum of 3,000 calories a day. And then again, it goes up from there. The higher the percentage of carbohydrates in the diet, and the lower the percentage of fat and protein, the more calories you can eat. And you'll notice following that style of a diet, you will be hungrier more often because you're just burning, burning, burning through that um, carbohydrate energy and you're just getting leaner, leaner, and leaner over time. And that's the way it works. If you're trying to put weight on your system, uh, increase your fat and protein intake. Calories aren't going to really influence weight as much as macronutrient intakes do. So carbohydrate calorie intake is going to generate a lean body, whereas increasing your fat and protein intake is going to be more anabolic in nature while you're putting weight onto the body. So it all depends on what your goals are. But in general, on a plant-based diet, in order to be healthy and maintain optimal health, you'll want to stick to a uh, macronutrient ratio of 70% carbohydrates uh, plus, so 70% or more carbohydrate intake, 20% or less protein intake, and 15% or less fat intake. And that's in order to not be taking in excess fat and protein that becomes detrimental to your health and uh, make sure that you're taking in enough carbohydrate energy to supply energy needs and uh, pretty much that that baseline will allow for you to achieve uh, a level of optimal health and then you can change the macronutrient ratios around from there in order to suit what your goals are. So getting back into how many calories you need a day, there's ways to subjectively measure this as well and I uh, mentioned going off of your appetite. So once you know how many calories you need to be eating in terms of a minimum, uh, and you're somewhat uh, used to what that kind of food looks like, especially on a plant-based diet, you're going to be eating a higher volume of food in general. You can always use chronometer.com. I'll leave a link for that in the description below to figure out how many calories you are getting from your diet, what the macronutrient ratio breakdown looks like uh, in terms of carbs, fats, and protein, how much fiber you're getting, what the nutrient breakdown is completely. So it's a nice tool to use, but once you become more aware of the content of your diet, you can start going based off of subjective measurements, like your appetite, how you feel energy-wise. Um, if you're really stressed out or having to reach for stimulants or really fatigued or anything like that, in general, you're going to need more calories. Um, other things, uh, you'll need more calories with more physical or mental activity. Um, your digestive capacity uh, can, will also tell you how many calories you need to be eating as well as the frequency of your meals. Um, for instance, if you're just getting started and you have quite a bit of indigestion and uh, digestive issues with having larger meals, you can still eat the same amount of calories but break down your meals into smaller meals so you're training your digestive um, 
muscles to get stronger so over time they can handle larger volume meals and more food in one sitting. And that in turn, your digestive strength is a really good indicator of what your metabolism's like. Uh, for instance, if you can't put a lot of food in, it just means that, means that your system needs to get stronger. And by getting stronger, uh, your metabolism is going to increase. So whenever we increase the strength of any of our organ systems, our muscular system, our digestive system, our nervous system, we function more efficiently. So of course there's a threshold for that, but um, it's like if you haven't used your muscles in a really long time, you're gonna have to start slowly to, to train them to be able to handle more. And your digestion is the same. You have to train your stomach and your intestinal tract um, to be able to handle the amount of calories and the amount of food that you're putting in your body. But as your metabolism increases over time, so will your digestive strength. They kind of go hand in hand. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, other subjective gauges on calorie intake is uh, how you're sleeping. If you're not sleeping too great, you might need to eat more food. Um, athletic performance, if you're not able to consistently maintain your uh, exercise, you'll need to eat more food more carbohydrates in particular. So when I'm saying food in general, you'll need to eat more carbohydrate-based foods because these all support energy production. Uh, fat and protein don't support energy production, but they do contain nutrients like essential fatty acids and essential amino acids that we do require in the diet, but not in large amounts. And you can check out my videos on fat and protein uh, to find out more about those macronutrients, but that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I also did a detailed blog post about how many calories you need a day. It has more specifics about what a calorie is exactly and uh, just the difference between carbohydrate, fat, and protein calories, which I talked about a little bit in this video. And I guess I'll mention too that a calorie is just a unit of energy, um, but not all calories are the same. And it's because uh, calories... Uh, they come from different things and our body requires a certain amount of calories but it prefers to take our calories from carbohydrate foods that it can convert into glucose and then create energy from that whereas fat and protein like I've already discussed are very inefficient energy creators so we don't want to be taking in those um, specific macronutrients for energy production. We want to stick to the carbohydrates. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. If you need help with figuring out how many calories you specifically need, you can contact me through my website, nutritionbyvictoria.com, and we can uh, start delving into what you can do in order to um, enhance your diet and get in enough calories. Uh, Give this video a like if you did find it helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Check out that blog post. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Again, it's a more detailed, um, it contains more detailed information about how many calories you need in a day. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye.